What you're looking at is a map of the world if Antarctica were to completely melt, leaving the oceans to rise hundreds of feet, completely wiping out many of the world's largest cities. Well, the impact of climate change is already very real for villagers on an island in northern Alaska. Nearly all of the world's glaciers are losing mass at an alarming pace. Climate change is pushing Greenland over the edge. But is any of this actually true? I mean, scientists have been warning us that Miami, New Orleans, Shanghai, London are all predicted to be underwater within the next 100 years if seas continue to rise at their current rates. But nobody really seems to be relocating. Covering New England now, the Obamas will be calling Massachusetts home for at least part of the year. TMZ reporting they purchased the Martha's Vineyard estate. Zuckerberg bought a 357 acre beachfront plantation on Kauai. Are you hanging out in the East Coast War? I'm out. Uh... Like oh, I went to the, your precious Hamptons this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> My Guess who lives out there? King Lear! <laughs> <laughs> And what happens if the extreme were to happen where Antarctica completely melts one day? Would Earth eventually be completely underwater? Well, the majority of you watching this video probably don't realize how much ice Antarctica actually has. Before Antarctica became its own continent, the landmass was part of a larger continent known as Gondwanda. Eventually, as tectonic plates shifted and ocean currents separated land masses, Antarctica broke off from Gondwanda and shifted south into its present day location. At this time, Earth was going through a massive heat spike. This heat spike lasted roughly 220,000 years, where the average global temperature increased by 5 to 8 degrees Celsius, which allowed Antarctica to house lush vegetation and even palm trees, despite now being at the South Pole. Many of the animals that lived on this continent also traveled to the South Pole with Antarctica. Eventually, this period of intense heat ended about 35 million years ago. Antarctica consisted of many different islands, but as the Earth started entering colder phases, the islands that made up Antarctica started connecting through massive ice sheets. Fast forward through the Ice Age, which ended only recently when compared to the history of the Earth, and Antarctica grew massive in size to over 13 million square kilometers, which is almost double the size of Australia. All of the lush vegetation and animals that made up Antarctica died off, and all that was left were the massive ice fields and some arctic animals that evolved to survive the present day tundra. Given Antarctica is now located over the South Pole, the continent is essentially a massive desert where there is practically zero humidity and only sees 2 inches of precipitation each year. With not much new snow falling and temperatures only getting warmer, this has led the continent to start losing its mass. 70% of our planet's fresh water is there. Every second, three Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of ice is disappearing from Antarctica. And if it melts, and it is melting, you'd be in denial if you didn't think so. There is no stopping it. It's going to continue to do so even if we stop burning fossil fuel. Antarctica is currently 97.6% ice, where the ice stretches three miles deep in some spots. With all of this ice, this means there is a lot of land to lose, but just how much would other countries and cities be impacted if the continent were to melt completely? Well, for the earliest prediction in 2050, Antarctica is expected to lose 5 trillion tons of ice, which would raise ocean levels by one foot or about a third of a meter. Now, one foot may not sound extremely substantial, but many cities across the globe only sit on a couple feet of elevation above sea level. For example, in the entire country of Maldives and the Indian Ocean, the maximum elevation for the country is just 6 feet. Many of the homes in the Maldives that are located along the water will start experiencing flooding within the next couple decades because of the melting ice. While the Maldives may be a relatively small country, larger cities are in danger as well. Most notably, Miami, Florida and the United States is very susceptible to flooding from rising seas. Miami sits at only 5 to 6 feet above sea level and many of the beachfront resorts and homes are at an even lower elevation than this. But let's just say for the purpose of this video, we're looking further down the line than 30 years out to just see how bad this flooding of coastal cities could get. The first possible large-scale melting event to take place would be the collapse of the Thwaites Glacier in Antarctica. The fuse has been blown and the Doomsday Glacier is coming for us all. If Thwaites melts, it'll increase sea levels worldwide. And 
what's really important to note about Thwaites that's different than basically every other glacier in the world is that it's not melting like a popsicle on a sidewalk on a hot summer day, you know, because of warmer weather. It's melting because changes in the ocean current temperature, just one or two degrees, that warmer water is getting underneath the glacier itself. And the concern is that by melting it from below, it will destabilize a lot of the glacier or most of the glacier, and the whole thing will crumble and fall into the sea. This glacier is located in Western Antarctica and currently accounts for 4% of the global sea level rise. If this glacier were to shatter and separate from Antarctica, the Thwaite Glacier alone would raise the ocean two feet. An even more disastrous scenario would be if the West Antarctic ice sheet were to collapse. Antarctica is composed of two major geologically distinct parts bridged by a vast ice sheet. East Antarctica, the larger of the two, is roughly the size of the United States and is composed of large islands covered by an ice sheet that averages 1.6 miles in thickness. West Antarctica, the smaller portion, is a mosaic of small continental blocks that are connected through the West Antarctic Ice Sheet. Most of the West Antarctic Ice Sheet is grounded below sea level and in places over 1.5 miles below the sea level. A collapse of the Western Antarctic Ice Sheet is the most likely player in long-term ocean level rise. Geological studies have shown that this type of ice sheet is inherently unstable and vulnerable to rapid collapse. A disappearance of this ice sheet would be the ultimate catalyst for a complete earth-altering event. Sea levels would rise 14 feet from their current levels, completely wiping out many of the world's largest coastal cities. As mentioned before, Miami would be completely underwater, along with Fort Lauderdale, Naples, and essentially all of the peninsula of Florida would be engulfed in the Atlantic, other than some of the higher parts like Orlando, Tampa, and Jacksonville. New Orleans would have another Hurricane Katrina-like situation where the entire Louisiana Delta would flood and even make its way far up into Louisiana and Mississippi. Much of the Texas coastal towns would also get flooded, such as Galveston and Corpus Christi, but Houston would be relatively fine because of the flood measures they have set in place from past hurricanes and their relatively high elevation at 79 feet. Zooming out, the United States generally would not have to worry just yet because of the infrastructure that has been set in place for cities like New York City, Boston, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. For other regions of the world, well, that's a different story. If we zoom over to Asia, 14 feet of sea level rise becomes a much more catastrophic problem. China's biggest city, Shanghai, which has a population of 26 million people, only has a max elevation of 13 feet. This would be like multiplying New York City by three and then having all of their homes engulfed by the ocean. Having one of the world's major financial hubs completely destroyed would force a massive amount of people to have to relocate inland. The entire city of Bangkok, Thailand would be in immense trouble given the city only sits at 4 feet of elevation. Bangkok has a population of over 10 million people, making it one of Asia's most densely populated cities. Tokyo, Seoul, Singapore, and Dhaka would experience flooding in the more low-lying areas that are located close to the ocean. Moving over to Eastern Asia, the main problem would come along the Persian Gulf and Red Sea. In the booming city of Dubai, the elevation of this city only sits at a max of 16 feet. Extreme measures would have to be put in place to keep the seawater out of the city, but they may just have the money to preserve one of the world's wealthiest cities. Likewise, Doha, Qatar has an elevation of only 9 feet, so a sea level rise of 14 feet would be detrimental to the entire country. Rome, Barcelona, and parts of London would receive substantial flooding along their coastal regions, and massive populations would have to relocate to avoid the rising waters. Now, while these are all problems massive cities around the globe would experience, the smaller islands in the oceans would have much bigger problems with less land to relocate to. But just how likely is it that the Western Antarctic Ice Sheet actually melts? And what would happen if the entire continent of Antarctica's ice were to melt? How soon this ice sheet were to melt is extremely hard to measure as there is not only limited data on Antarctica's ice, but the rate at which the globe is warming is constantly changing. The best estimates from National Geographic is that the West Antarctic ice sheet could disappear within the next 500 years. Now, if we take this even one step further, if the massive Eastern Atlantic ice sheet were to melt entirely, leaving just the disconnected islands of Antarctica behind, the ocean would rise nearly 200 feet in elevation. 
This would completely wipe out coastal cities and even countries around the world, relocating where the majority of the world's population lives. This is a map of the world if the sea levels rose 200 feet. Now, the United States' major coastal cities would be completely underwater along with many of these states as well. Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, Washington DC, Charleston, Miami, Tampa, New Orleans, Houston, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, and Vancouver would all be underwater. If we move over to Europe, parts of Dublin, parts of London, Brussels, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Stockholm, St. Petersburg, Lisbon, Barcelona, parts of Rome, Venice, and Istanbul would all be completely engulfed by the ocean. If we move over to Asia, Baghdad, Kuwait, Doha, Dubai, the entire country of Bangladesh, Bangkok, Singapore, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Beijing, Seoul, and Tokyo would be destroyed by the rising waters. Essentially, all of the world's biggest cities were located along oceans and seas for trade, which is why sea levels rising could lead to such a massive migration never seen before. One of the islands that would have a tough time surviving a 200-foot sea increase is the world's most remotely inhabited island, Tristan da Cunha, which is located in the southern Atlantic Ocean. It is truly incredible how people survive on this island, and you can find what a full day for these residents look like in this video right here.